Hi, my name is Judy Rieben. I'm Audrey Blakely Smith. And we're both clinical psychologists at the University of Colorado School of Medicine. We're going to talk with you today about children with autism spectrum disorders and anxiety. Uh, first, Audrey's going to talk a little bit about how anxiety can present in children with ASD as well as how commonly occurring those symptoms may be in children on the autism spectrum. Then I'm going to talk a little bit about how we treat the anxiety disorders or symptoms in children with ASD. Anxiety symptoms are one of the most commonly co-occurring conditions in children with ASD, with symptoms potentially interfering significantly in day-to-day -day life, interfering with a child's ability to attend school, attend events in the community, and truly impacting the family's overall quality of life. So when symptoms do become that significant and are interfering, we do think about the need for evidence-based interventions. Let me describe some of the symptoms though. Many of the symptoms that we see in children with autism spectrum disorders are also very similar to those symptoms we see in typically developing children. There could be fears of the dark, fears of change, fears of the future, but there can also be fears that may be tied more to the core deficit, so social difficulties, fear of speaking to new people, making friends, also fears related to sensory properties such as loud noises. Um, so when these fears do become significant and are interfering, that's when we consider the possibility of intervention. Right, so here's what we know about intervention for treating the anxious symptoms in typically developing youth. Um, the most uh, widespread psychosocial intervention for treating these symptoms is something called cognitive behavior therapy, or CBT. It's very well evidenced and researched in the general population, and the research that's been conducted so far for children with um, autism spectrum disorders and anxiety has been very promising. Um, the majority of those studies thus far has included school-age kids as well as adolescents, and they tend to be on the higher end of the autism spectrum at this point, but um, there are research efforts underway currently to try to modify those CBT interventions for children that are less verbally um, fluent. In any event, CBT is comprised of a couple of core components, one of which is paying attention to your cognitions or what it is that you're telling yourself when you face a feared situation. Um, paying attention to your body's reaction to anxiety or a feared stimulus, and then probably most importantly being able to face a fear or using graded exposure, which does mean face a fear a little at a time. So if we were going to take an example of a child who might be afraid of using a public bathroom, which can be common in children with ASD, what we might do is first think, well, what is it that he might be telling himself or he or she um, as they're approaching a public restroom? It could be that, oh, this bathroom is too scary, I can't use it, something bad might happen to me when I'm in the bathroom. So we might help encourage them to use helpful thoughts, which might be, well, this, this bathroom, um, I, it's, it, um, it may not be the best bathroom, but I need to be able to use it because I have to go and my family's on vacation and I'm not going to let this get in my way. So that might be a helpful thought. Another thing that we want to do is pay attention to their um, physical symptoms that they might be experiencing. So we might have them take some deep breaths before they approach the bathroom, or we might have them um, try to engage in some calming and relaxing activities in, in kind of a regular way to be able to manage how their body might be reacting to, to fear or worry. But finally, most importantly, as we said earlier, uh, we do want to have kids face fears. Um, so if we were going to have a child face his fear of using a public bathroom and use a graded exposure technique, so facing fear a little at a time, we might start with a small step, which would be walking past a bathroom door but not going in. A follow-up step might be being able to open the door to the bathroom and step inside for just a few minutes. Another step following that might be to go approach the sink or look at the toilets but not actually use them until finally they're actually able to use a toilet, flush it, wash their hands, and then leave the bathroom. All along the way, we're of course giving kids positive rewards. Sometimes they may be tangible, but many times they'll be um, you know, sort of intangible, intangible rewards or just lots of praise because really what we're trying to go for here is that we want our kids to feel brave and that they've accomplished something that even although it was hard for them, we want them to feel like they can overcome that and um, and be able to to, uh, to manage their fears. So if it was using a public washroom to be able to go in and then, and then use it successfully. 
So in summary, anxiety symptoms are very common in children with autism spectrum disorders. These symptoms can interfere significantly in day-to-day -day life, but the good news is these symptoms are very responsive to treatment, and we have seen great success with evidence-based interventions such as CBT. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you.